Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about modeling transmission lines in LTSpice. Now one of the basic components available is the 4 port transmission line. And this is good enough when you want to model something like a unbalanced structure, say a coax cable. But what about a more complex structure, like a shielded differential line? How would the model for this thing look like? Well, if you're curious about that and much more, then keep watching. So what makes a differential pair special compared to the basic coupled transmission line? Well, other than having more terminals, the complexity comes from the fact that a differential pair doesn't just carry a differential signal, but to some extent, you also have a common mode component in there. The other important aspect to consider is where exactly the electromagnetic wave is traveling. Even if you're driving just the differential pair, the presence of a ground in close proximity is non-negligible. So let's start looking at where the differential signal travels with a set of extreme examples. If we consider a cable pair, like a twisted wire or a ladder line, with no ground anywhere near, then all of the differential wave travels in between the two conductors. So nothing special really occurs here. Another extreme example is when you take two pieces of coax and interconnect the two shields, and then drive this thing with a differential signal. Here all of the wave will exist in between the two conductors and the ground. There is no direct wave in between the conductors themselves. So the wave will in part be traveling through the dielectric, and from there, there will be a current traveling through the ground itself. Finally, you have something like a shielded twisted pair, and here part of the field is directly in between the two conductors, and part of it is traveling through the ground. Now, from a differential impedance point of view, all three of these structures can be built to have exactly the same impedance. Say 100 ohms for an example. But the tricky part is creating an accurate model that is modeling not just the differential impedance, but also the impedance in reference to ground. So the other impedance to consider when looking at these structures is the common mode impedance. And to put things into perspective, we now need to compare the two impedances on these structures to see which is larger, the common mode or the differential mode. Well, for the first structure, if we consider that the ground is far away, then definitely the differential impedance will be smaller. With the last structure, as long as it's symmetrical, we can say that the common mode impedance is half that of the differential one. We can of course make an asymmetrical structure where the common mode impedance will be much smaller, but anyway, the point is, definitely the common mode impedance is smaller than the differential one. Finally, with the middle structure, it depends. You will of course not be able to get to either of the two extremes, you will be somewhere in between. Point being that based on the exact structure geometry, the distance in between the lines and the distance to ground, you can adjust the common mode and the differential mode impedance ratio. But why should we even care about the common mode impedance? I mean, you're using your differential lines with differential signals, right? Well, that is the intended use case, but no differential signal is perfect. In practice, when closely analyzing a differential signal, there is always some amount of imbalance, either as a phase shift or as an amplitude difference. And even if you completely ignore the useful signal that is traveling through your circuit, there will still always be some amount of built-in noise, which is usually of common mode type. And this also travels over the lines. So regardless of the differential mode impedance, the larger the common mode impedance is, the smaller the common mode current will be. So in certain cases, it's good to take care of these two values. But then you also have cases like the USB 2.0 standard, where the differential mode impedance is specified to 90 ohms plus minus 15%, but then in certain cases, a common mode impedance is also specified somewhere in between 21 and 39 ohms. Now, the other important use case that you might want to simulate is crosstalk. So when you have a useful signal on one trace, 
and you don't really want to get that signal on the other, by carefully modeling the impedance from one trace to the other and from each trace to ground, you can observe exactly how much coupling will occur and how much signal will get induced into the second line. So the first model that we can create is one in which we define three couplings, one from each line to the ground and one coupling directly in between the lines. So for simplicity, we can consider the structure as being balanced, so the two impedances to ground are the same. And well, an equivalent simulation model will look like this, in which we have three different transmission lines. Now, if we define the differential impedance as the impedance in between the two lines, and the common mode impedance as the impedance from both lines to ground, we can link these two parameters to our structure in the following way. So each ground impedance will be double that of the common mode impedance, and while for the other impedance, we can define it based on both the common and the differential mode impedance values. And to test out some values, let's consider an example structure that has 100 ohms of differential impedance and 100 ohms of common mode impedance. Using our formulas, this gives us the following values for the two transmission line impedances. So now, let's test things out in the circuit simulator. So first of all, we can create a reference circuit, one that replicates an ideal differential pair with an impedance of 100 ohms. For this, I created a differential signal source, so I have two sources, one of which has a 180 degrees phase shift, and both of these have a output impedance of 50 ohms. So the total output impedance of this pair is 100 ohms. Now the transmission line on the other side is also terminated into a 100 ohm load, which is ground referenced in the middle, just to prevent any sort of simulation errors. And now if we simulate this and look onto the signal source side, so let's take one of these, we can see that the signal coming out of the signal source is attenuated to minus six decibels and we have a flat response over a wide frequency range. So the load that is connected to this signal source is again 50 ohms. If we look to the other signal source, we get the same flat response. So we can say that our signal source is matched to the system. Next, we can try out our free transmission line structure. First of all, with the differential signal. So again, we have the same setup. So if we look on the signal source side and we just plot out our two lines, well, we can see our perfectly flat response at minus six decibels. And with a very slight deviation above 100 megahertz, and that's really because our characteristic impedance of 133.333 should continue with an endless number of frees. So I didn't really simulate that, that's why the very small deviation is occurring. But anyway, we can say that our signal source is connected to a 100 ohm differential load. Now, we can of course verify the common mode impedance by shorting the two input and output terminals and connecting to a 100 ohm signal source on one side and to a 100 ohm load on the other. So if we look here at the signal source, again we can see a perfectly flat minus six decibel response, indicating that the common mode impedance is also 100 ohms. So this sort of model seems to work quite nicely. Now, you may have already noticed in the simulation, I didn't really measure differential impedance, but rather the single-ended impedance when the structure was driven with a differential signal. If you ever studied differential structures and their impedance, you may have come across the terms of odd mode and even mode impedance. That's the next thing to look at. So odd mode and even mode impedance refers to the impedance seen on a single line, first when a differential mode signal is applied, and second when a common mode signal is applied. So the total differential impedance is the sum of the two lines odd mode impedance, so it's twice of the odd mode impedance when a structure is symmetrical, and the common mode impedance is the two even mode impedances in parallel. So it's half of the even mode impedance for a symmetrical structure. So most PCB trace calculators that analyze differential traces will also provide these two values, the odd and the even mode impedance. And you could convert these to the structure that we looked at previously, but another interesting model for a differential transmission line that I found was this thing. So this uses four transmission line pairs, but all of the values used are derived from the odd and even mode impedance. 
And because this is a theoretical model that is only used in a circuit simulator, there's absolutely no issue in using negative impedance values. So if we want to recreate the initial model that we had, so the one with 100 ohms of both differential and common mode impedance, we can quickly calculate the odd and even mode impedances and just use those values in this type of circuit. So if we now reuse the same setups as before with our new model, we can look at the differential mode and the common mode response. So starting with the setup for the differential signal, if we simulate this and look at the signal coming out of the signal sources, again, we can see our perfectly flat minus six decibel response, indicating that this structure is presenting a 100 ohm differential impedance. If we look at the other circuit where the lines are shorted, so to observe the common mode impedance, and we plot out the signal on the signal source side, again, we can see our perfectly flat minus six decibel result. So the structure also has the 100 ohms of common mode impedance. Now you can use either one of these structures to model a differential line, but there is one more aspect to discuss, which highlights why the second structure, although more complex, in my opinion at least, is better. So when you're analyzing the lossless lumped element model of a simple transmission line, this can be constructed from sets of inductors and capacitors and the exact impedance and propagation delay can be calculated based on the total inductance and capacitance values. So these will be the sums of the individual bits in the sections. Now, if we analyze the same type of model for the differential line, well, first of all, it's far more complex, but once you analyze it a bit, it does start to make sense. So first of all, you have your single-ended inductance and capacitance, and these are the parameters associated with each line in reference to ground. And then you have your mutual capacitance and mutual inductance, which represents the direct coupling from one line to the other. Now, based on these section parameters, you can now determine the total single-ended and mutual inductance and capacitance. And from this, you can calculate the odd mode and even mode parameters. So you get different impedances, this is to be expected, but what I personally found interesting is that the propagation delay can also be different. So the time it takes for the common mode signal to pass through this type of structure is not the same as the time it takes for the differential signal to travel. And this is where the four transmission line structure is superior. It allows easy modeling of all four of these parameters. So not just the impedance, but also the propagation delay and it does it in a very clear fashion. In the end, differential transmission lines are quite common. And if you want to correctly model them in a real life use case, you will always need to consider not just the direct coupling, so the one that is occurring from one line to another, but also the ground coupling. And with that said, hope you got some useful information on this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be updated on my videos and see you next time. Bye-bye.